Hello everybody, it's Anna here again today and today we are at the world famous Bodden and Garden here at Snowdonia in North Wales. So come along and join us, you're very, very welcome. Don't forget, welcoming Welsh is Croeso. So we'll be doing some history and we'll be doing some Welsh language. Here we are at the famous Laverna March. If you Google Laverna March, Bodden and Garden, you can read all about it. But uh, we just saw Alfie, he's got his blue jacket on today. So come along and join us. You are very, very welcome as usual. And don't forget, welcome in Welsh is Croeso. So we're going to be taking a walk around the massive garden. And it's a great garden not to be missed. Bodden and Garden is perched above the River Conway and it has views across the valley to the Snowdonia National Park. So this is a National Trust property and there is 80 hillside acres of Bodden Garden um, spanning Italianite terraces, meadows and woods, riverside gardens and more than 250 years of horticultural history. It's home to plants from around the world and champion trees and botanic collections. So we can enjoy daffodils and all sorts of flowers in spring and roses, water lilies and wildflowers in summer and rich leaf colour in autumn and a stunning designed winter garden. It's open all year and it's very fascinating. And again, this is one of the places that we brought our children to from a very early age. It's so, so beautiful and well worth visiting. So, um, Bodnant Garden in Welsh is Gareth Bodnant and is, like I said, a National Trust property based near Tally Cavern in Conwy, North Wales, overlooking the Conwy Valley towards the Carnevai Mountains. Now, it was founded in 1874 and developed by five generations of one family and it was actually given to the National Trust in 1949. And they continue to open uh, new uh, parts of the garden. We actually visited uh, a place, uh, was it last week we went? Uh, that was um, brand newly opened really, we'd never been there before. Look at that waterfall. This is a very peaceful place to walk by and sit and this is the, the, the area that we've never been to before and it's further down right at the far end of the garden and it was so, so romantic and so peaceful. We had our lunch here at this spot actually and each time that we've gone over the years there has tended to be newer places of the garden open so it's always good to keep going back really and starting in April you get the look at this I was in the maze here and uh, it's not very big but I nearly got lost I'm going to get I'm lost terrible in here. mazes I can't go round with um, <laughs> Alf I can't go round with our, our children either I don't like them I guess but here it wasn't too bad because it wasn't really <laughs> it wasn't grown uh, with all the leaves and everything yet I mentioned earlier how Bodmin Garden uh, is really famous for its Laburna March, which we saw right at the start where Alf was underneath wearing his blue jacket. And this arch is actually the longest in the United Kingdom and flowers in May and June. And it's a very, very beautiful time to be going round about now to see that. And the garden is also celebrated for its link to the plant hunters of the early 1900s, whose expeditions formed the base of the garden's four na national collections of plants. So going to the history of the garden and what it's all about, basically um, the garden's founder, who was called Henry Davis Potchin, was a Leicestershire-born Victorian industrial chemist who acquired fame and fortune inventing a process for classifying rosin using soap, turning it from the traditional brown to white. Anyway, he became a successful businessman, a mayor, and brought the Bodnant estate, um, sorry, not brought, he bought this Bodnant estate in 1874 and employed Edward Milner, um, apprentice to Joseph Paxton, to redesign the land around the existing Georgian mansion house, which we'll see a bit later on, uh, then what was just lawns and pasture. And together, Potchin and Milner 
Rhi landscaped the hillside and valley, planting American and Asian conifers on the, the banks of the river to create um, a place where stream banks um, flow to create a woodland and water garden in the valley. In the style of the garden designer of the day, William Robinson, in his book called The Wild Garden. And in the upper garden, Potchin and Milner created that famous Laverne Arch that we saw at the start of the video. The development of the garden then was continued by Henry and Agnes Potchin's daughter, Laura McLaren, who was the Baroness Abbott Conway, who married Charles McLaren, who was the first Baron Abbott Conway. And Laura, like her mother, was a campaigner for women's suffrage and founded the Liberal Women's Suffrage Union. She was also a passionate gardener and inspired her son, Henry McLaren, second Baron Abbot Conway, to whom she entrusted the care of the garden in 1901. And from 1905 to 1914, Henry oversaw the completion of the five terraces that are here. And this was a massive earth moving project done by men without machinery, which involved levelling the hillside and building granite buttress walls, which provided protection for tender plants that were being introduced to the garden from overseas. And the pin mill, pin mill building on the canal terrace was added in 1938. Originally built in 1730, we just saw the date I closed in on that just a, a couple of minutes ago. Um, in Gloucestershire, this was rescued actually from decay by Henry, who dismantled it, brought it to Bodnant, and rebuilt it brick by brick, as you saw just a few minutes ago. Anyway, Henry actually went on to become president of the Royal Horticultural Society for 22 years, and he persuaded the National Trust to accept gardens on their own merit. And in 1949, he actually handed over the Bodnant Garden to the National Trust. And throughout the 1900s, the continued development of the garden was a partnership between three generations of the McLaren family, Henry, Charles and Michael, and three generations of head gardeners, Frederick, Charles and Martin Puddle. Like his father, Charles McLaren became president of the Royal Horticultural Society in 1961. As was his father and grandmother, he was also awarded the highest accolade of the Royal Horticultural Society, the Victoria Medal of Honour. And Charles's sister, Dr Anne McLaren, was actually one of Britain's leading scientists. She pioneered techniques of reproductive biology which led to IVF and cancer research. And there's myself enthralled in the garden, looking at the beauty of what is around. And back to present day, uh, Charles' son Michael McLaren inherited this property in 2003, and he is a practising barrister and continues to act as garden manager. Troy Scott Smith took over as head gardener in 2006, and the position of head gardener was taken over in 2015 by John Rippon. The Italianite mansion that we've seen, and I think we may see again in this video, um, was built in 1792 uh, by Colonel, Colonel Fogs. He actually built it, it's called Bodnant Hall, and he built it to replace an earlier house and developed this parkland around Bodnant Hall in English uh, landscape style. The Bodnant estate is predominantly agricultural, with some woodland and a few lakes and also has some mountain land in Snowdonia. The main part of the estate lies on the east bank of the River Conwy, centred on the Eglwysbach Valley. West of the Eglwysbach Valley, between it and the River Conwy, the estate rises to about 234 metres at Garth Mountain, which has two lakes, fine views and very good walking. And east of the Eglisbach Valley, the estate rises to about 341 metres. 
So that's some history of the Bodnam Garden and the five generations of um, family that lived here and uh, worked here. And uh, we'll leave it there. This is the mansion I was telling you about, the Italianite mansion. And we'll leave it there and we'll say ta-ta for now and we'll see you on the next adventure or the next Welsh lesson. Don't forget to keep practising your Welsh because practice makes perfect. Even though we didn't do much today, we've brought along some pronunciation of the names like Edlis Bach, but um, we'll be back to do some Welsh language again in another video. But uh, thank you for joining us here at Bodnar Garden in Snowdonia in North Wales. Ta-ta for now. Nostar. No